transformation of this country in all its facets, in its political makeup, to make it more democratic through a curriculum that supports more civic education, but also to transform it economically to where the human capital that we shape in our schools becomes the most important factor in the transition of this country from poverty to wealth. The entire curriculum is saying innovation, it is saying thinking, it is saying problem solving, it is saying financial literacy, it is saying technological savviness, it is also saying leadership development right from ECD and then transitioning these people into higher education education. It is saying we move away from rote learning and regurgitation of what we have learned to where we apply knowledge for a purpose. And the purpose is to say Zimbabwe should be a better place for future generations. And that's the whole, whole vision that we had with uh, that uh, curriculum. I, uh, while I am very grateful for what is happening here, uh, sometimes when I have gone through a facility, I have seen a facility like this, my stress level actually goes up. You know, it's a good thing, but uh, it actually increases my, my stress level. Because immediately I think about Batanai Primary School in Gope North. I think about a school down in Binga. I think about Vimba Primary School on the border with Mozambique in the Chimani Mani district. And I say, I'm glad these cities are fortunate enough to have parents who can provide a service like this one. But what do we do about the potential doctors, engineers, innovators that are at Batanai, that are in Binga, that are the Vimba. What do we do as a nation? The world is, you know, everywhere else in the world, including some of the African countries, they have really trotted into the 21st century. And they are preparing learners for jobs of the 21st century. Some of them, which we as yet don't know what they're going to look like. But the engineer from Gopi, potential, the potential doctor from there, the potential innovator from there, how do we make sure that they are facilitated so that they, they, they realize their potential? I think that's one thing that I want to leave you with, to think about what can we do as a nation in order to develop capacity for every young child in this country? What do we do in order to optimize the attainment of the potential that we have? What 
kind of resources, how can we garner and generate resources that will allow us to put facilities not exactly as state of the art as these, but facilities that can make for quality education in every part of this country. We have to understand that education, when provided to a single learner, it benefits the entirety of the nation. If it's not provided for by the nation, especially to those who cannot afford, then the nation is doing itself a very big disservice. Because the parents in less privileged positions will give up because they will say, why are you giving us the burden to educate learners who are going to benefit all of us? Do, 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 do you get the sense? So we have a national collective responsibility to make sure that we have provided education to every one of us. I am happy that we have done this. But I want to mobilize all stakeholders to the education sector to work with us, to brainstorm as to how we can come up with a system that provides for free basic education in this country so that we can attain optimal realization of the skills and competencies that will transform our country from poverty to wealth. And I always say we can do this within one generation. Um, so, I'm not going to take too much time, but to let you know that we have changed the law, we're in the process of changing the law, and we're going to legislate for free basic education. But legislation is not enough. We need, we need, we need to come up with a strategy for resource generation so we can realize free basic education. I also want to say, uh, because this is a public platform, I want to thank Zimbabwe for the immediate response to the calamity that we had uh, in about four provinces, but mainly affecting Manikali province, especially the districts of Chipinge and Chimani. Uh, but also much east, um, Mashingo, and parts of the weekends. The response has been so good. Next week, we go into the affected schools to start the reconstruction process. Government has put in money. Uh, so far, uh, we have already received five million from government, but we are also getting money from international donors, uh, international, the UN family through UNICEF, and lots of Zimbabweans in their individual as well as organizational capacities have made those contributions. So I want on behalf of the government to also thank you, uh, thank Zimbabwe for what has happened. And I am actually taking advantage of this to modernize the infrastructure in the affected schools. They are not going to remain the same as they were before. Some of them are actually going to have PCD centers that are much better. They will not be like this, but they will be much better. 
than what they had. Others did not have. I'm also going to make sure that every one of those affected schools is now going to have reticulated water because because out of this calamity should come something very good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And officially, let me say we have commissioned uh, this ECB. Thank you. Professor Paul Mavino. On behalf of Eagleville School, I would like to thank you for officiating at this function. As a school, we are, we are humbled to have you, to have your presence at this function. Thank you.
before he looks more honorable, but like that's how I hate for. <laughs> so now I call upon um, the headmaster, Mr. Bunde, uh, please to, to lead us to the ECG center. May we all rise.
it for refreshments in the ECG center. Oh, parents, you can go to the ECG center. Yes. Oh, parents, to the ECG center. Thank you. Kebundiani, Paul Kebundiani, Yes, 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 yes,